Hi, it's Monica from EDAC. Today I will show you how to create great studio lighting. It will make your models and products look amazing. I use it a lot for creating viewing materials. This is my scene and I will create studio lighting for this armchair. Firstly, I will model two planes to create a background. I click on the rectangle tool, click once, drag to the right side and I type dimensions. It will be 900 by 620. Then I create vertical plane. I click once, drag here. I press left arrow on the keyboard to change the direction of the plane. And I type 900 by 420. Okay, it's done. Now it's time to create the arc between these two planes. To do this precisely, I click on the tape measure tool. I click on the edge move to the left and I type 120 and I do the same on the second plane, I type 120. Okay, it's done. Now using arc tool, I click on two point arc tool, I will create the arc. I click once, click second time and click third time. Let's change the number of segments in the arc, so I click on this expand entity info window and change number of segments to 60. Okay, it's much smoother. Now I click on push pull tool, click on the face and move it to the left. It's done. The arc is created. I will click three times to select all the faces and edges, right click and I reverse faces to have front faces in the background, then I click three times, right click and make group. That's all. This is our background. I go to the edit tab and delete guides. I go to the asset editor and then I move to render settings tab. I will change the exposure of the scene. We can change it in the camera tab or we can change it using advanced camera parameters. To get higher exposure, I will change shutter speed value. It's 300 by default, I will change it to 50. And let's see that automatically exposure value has changed. Let's change the render output. I expand this tab, turn on save frame and change aspect ratio. I change it to one to one. Let's increase the resolution to the higher values. It's done. It's time to create the view. I come a little closer and set the view correctly. I go to the camera tab, then I change it to two point perspective and it's fine. I save this scene. I go to the scenes on the right side and click plus. The view is saved. Let's go to the asset editor. Let's move to the lights tab. And here we have sunlight. This light is set by default. I will turn it off. I zoom out and it's time to create two kinds of lights. I will create primary and secondary light. Remember that primary light is the strongest light which determines the shadow's direction. Secondary light brightens the shadow and it's weaker. So I change the view, I click on the top view, I can change it to parallel projection and let's create rectangle lights. I click on the rectangle light, place it somewhere here and I go to the asset editor. A new rectangle light has appeared. I will rename it to primary light. This is our key light. Okay, let's change the size. It will be 30 by 30. I will create second light, click once, click second time and I will rename new light as a secondary light. This light will be weaker. Let's change the values, 30 by 30. I will move secondary light to the left side and let's move these two lights. I move it up, I right click, choose flip along blue direction. I will rotate it by 45 degrees. I use arrows to change the plane of rotation and I rotate it by 45 degrees. I go to the scene 2 and let's render the scene interactively. I click on this icon. Hi there, if you are enjoying the content and you want to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon. It supports the channel and you will never miss out on the latest videos.
This is our render. It's very bright. I will turn off secondary and primary light and let's see that the lighting is still visible. This is because the environment light is turned on. To turn it off, just go to the render settings, environment tab and uncheck background option. Now everything is black. I go to the lights tab and firstly I will focus on the primary light. Remember to set these lights separately. I turn on primary light and as we can notice this light is too dark. I will change intensity. I change it to 100. Let's try with 150 or 200. It's much brighter. Let's see that the shadows are visible. They are quite sharp. If you want to smooth the shadow, you can change the size of a rectangle. Let's take a look. I will change it to 60 and the shadows are more smoother. Remember, if you change the area of the rectangle lights and your units are set by default, the intensity of the rectangular lights will be higher. I go back to 30. I will change intensity to 250 and this is my first primary light. Let's move on and create secondary light. I turn off primary light, turn on the secondary light and let's say that this light should be weaker. I can increase intensity, for example to 50 and let's turn on primary light. And let's say that the shadows from primary light are brightened. I will turn off secondary light. These shadows are very dark. I will turn on secondary light and they are brightened. Remember not to set too high intensity of a secondary light because this secondary light shouldn't create its own shadows. Let's take a look. I will change it to 250 and now we have two shadows in two directions on the left side and on the right side. It is wrong and we should avoid the situation. I will go back to 50. It looks much better. To get better effect, I will change the color of the primary light. Mostly I set warmer color to primary light. I click on color texture and change Kelvin temperature to 5000. Let's see that the render looks much more interesting. And for secondary light, I will set colder color something around 7000 and this visualization looks much better with warm and cold light combined together. It's time to brighten the background using fill light. I zoom out and I will set fill light. I go to the top view, parallel projection, I click on the rectangle light, I create this light somewhere here, I move it up, right click flip along components blue and rotate it. And let's render interactively. This is my render. I will lock camera orientation. I click on it. And let's see that I can change the view in SketchUp, but on render it will be still the same view. Now I can change position of the new light. I will move it down. I will move it to the left. Let's rename this light to fill light and I change intensity and the background is brighten. Okay, it looks great. Let's render it progressively. This is our visualization with the higher quality. It looks really nice. So remember about these three types of lights, primary, secondary and fill light. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about V-Ray for SketchUp, check out my website edac.org. You will find there many free assets, free designs, V-Ray courses and articles. See you there.